Now, Food and Drugs Authority directs consuming public to be wary of pre-prepared foods being sold on the market. Um, after the AMA Health Offices uncovered substances, traders add to food being sold on the market. We'll get to speak to experts, the Food and Drugs Authority, and we'll hear from you, our viewers. We'll go on social media and also uh, tell you what people are saying. And we'll be taking you shortly to the market as well, because my colleague, MFA Nancy Jardosi, is with the team and will tell us more. Good afternoon to you, MFA. What else can you say about this worrying situation? Why are they? Well, before we engage MFA, here's what uh, the team found on their tour with the AMA team at Makala. First stop, the pepper mill. Even before the team will uncover filth, he confessed to not having a health card. So have you undergone AMA medical screening to obtain your health certificate? Yeah, once one of the the uh, AMA man mm -hmm. came here to come and inform us to come mm -hmm. go and do it. Inform you to go yeah. and do it? Yes. And have you done it? No, we have not done it, but I've given my particulars, everything to her. No. To what, do what have you given out? He said, go and do it for us. No. The AMA health certificate, we don't do it for somebody. You come there for us to take samples of yourself. And based on the samples, we send it to lab for analysis. And that will qualify you to be issued with the card. So if somebody say he is collecting your particulars to go and do the health certificate for you, it means there is some compromise on what you are going to do. You yourself, you are compromising what you are supposed to do. When we entered, cockroach infested mail with wires hanging loosely got the inspector disturbed. Can you see cockroaches all over? So you blend the, the, the this thing with cockroaches all over. So if we are going to put off this place, put it off in use. Yeah, that is what we're going to do. Because No, that's it. Today we are going for all of you because if you don't meet the standards that you are supposed to operate here, we will not allow you to operate. Oh, we'll do it. So I we are, take, I we I are saying part you of. should close the place. Please. Okay? Please. So you close the place, yeah. then you, 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 you do all the provisions that we will be directing you to do. I'll After do you it. are done, then we come and inspect. If you accept the standard, we allow you to operate. Just when he ordered the team to shut down the business, Joseph Asitanga discovered a polythene bag that contained what appeared to be red seeds. If you want to grind, if you want to grind pepper, you add this pepper and grind. Everybody in this world, <laughs> we don't like here, everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere they use everywhere. it. Every, every, I just want to understand how. <laughs> so what pepper? pepper? How safe is it? <laughs> how safe? Who has, uh, Who uh, has uh, authorized uh, this uh, as a safe product for you to mix it to produce? Oh, we are selling the market. Simultaneously, the team impounded a sack full of these mysterious seeds from this woman who also didn't have a health card. Mostly market women add it to pepper and tomatoes. Sometimes we see them milled fresh tomatoes and they are selling. And the color is so red. This is what mostly they add to it and even the pepper. We moved from pepper to the cornmeal only to find the corn mixed with lime. The operators were divided over the purpose of the lime. They've added this thing into the corn to also grind. I don't know why it's been added. What is the purpose of adding this into the corn? To do, you Please, you we are doing interested. It. Educate us. Is it the women who have been doing that or is you? The corn which is born in the water. The scent comes to the inside. That's why we use this one so that the corn will never be sent. So when you, when you add this into the corn, it doesn't smell like hey, it. That is smell. It, does, it smells bad, right? Yeah, yeah. But as soon as you said, if the corn is poor, that is why you add this. If the coin is dirty. It's dirty? Yeah. So this will clean the dirt. Can you imagine? Dirty, like the Fufu pounding mill was the next point. The operator's health card had expired and the Fufu was also left uncovered. The room was also covered in dust and cobwebs. And joining me in the studio to discuss this is um, Dr. Mavis Orikwa Sari. She's a food scientist and she's done a lot of research into food safety in our markets. Good to see you. Good to see you too. There's someone who's also joining us from the Food and Drugs Authority, Maria Lovelace Abba Johnson. She's Chief Regulatory Officer uh, from the FDA. She'll be joining this conversation shortly. But before I engage uh, Dr. 
Oracle. Let's get to Nancy MFA Dredosi right now, who is at the market. She's on the street and uh, she's been speaking. MFA will talk to us before we get uh, some uh, responses from Ghanaians on the street. So MFA, tell us more about this situation from where you are. Aisha, so um, I'm sure you remember um, the story I just felt, um, you know, when we discovered that some of the substances that were added to the food that you and I consume on a daily basis. And so yesterday we found pepper being mixed with some seeds. We also found condo being mixed with some lime and all of that. They were all revealing yesterday. But today we came to Malata Market, uh, one of the popular markets here in Accra. And yes, Vivian, she's trying to arrange um, her pepper. Vivian, in Bemika Accra. I just want to interact with her basically to find out first whether she does the same thing. If she doesn't, why? You know, what she has heard that her colleagues have been added to it. Vivian, next to saying. Pacha, you. Now, uh, what do you call in fear? 15 years. I don't yes. mm -hmm. 15 years. Pacha. Now, 15 years now, what did you be from? Oh, there be. I can't see me who be there. And see me a couple for numbers, I say, yeah, yeah, my cocoa, F. And dra, you come a Makola market. Now, they who are the next to any. Yako, a baby, a young Mekono, a almost day in Niaba and getting kitty. Ah, a red, the same way. No more, they are from Mekono, and on my yam, and on my own tongue, they are all tongue way saying something like this. A tongue they say, Emma Eddy. Now, what's in baby, what's in Hunkanda? What's the same one on for five bida? Oh, I'm going to meet me who be da. And to meet me, Mako original. And I'm a kind of can say, Mako is saying, a fine. Now, one I want to say, say, Papa Nankasa saying go for no more bar, or more day, or more talk in your banner, no matter, Makunankasa, Edia Fra, Matasa, Ebimusa, Ebukra, the Gary, Egoso. On this idea, and you counsel to me, the me who be that, me near being Suda. I want somebody Gary Fra. Oh, and you want one, say, in the Ghana and go for Pesica, and say, dear Bay, I'll be your brain, and no, or you so there's a bit of translation. She has been selling um, this powdered pepper you see here, the one you use for your stew regularly. She has been selling this for the past 15 years. She says she has heard rumors. She has heard that people add all sorts of substances, you know, to this pepper. But she does not rely on that. She just goes the natural way. Well, we cannot verify, but she says that that is what she does. She waits for the pepper, and she has evidence of the pepper that she sells here. She says that these pepper um, you see here are the ones that she just puts together in the mill and then turns out to be as reddish as this, as powdered as this, as she sells. And so she has heard about all the other things, but she cannot actually verify because she has not seen with her naked eye. But when say a ye a young woman too, say a Diania ye dear koye yim, na or be at naho, na or the yama to say Gary, a day any and ya buy yen verify from the Food and Drugs Authority, a dear fry, a dear Janama yedi. Oh, a hard dream, go for the best, say, oh, we are someone yaku my yare. Ah, and Pepino, who beg you ma, say, see, a tin of a margarine tin. Then see there is auto. I say Papa. So ni pa da se ni beka so pa di food. So koko thirteen of we margarine. O be turn five CD. Enu enye Papa. Enso di kofia. If from afar so pena ayet is say we di a di seed da yenu. Okay. Enti o difference ni say enti o turn margarine margarine tin is saying ten CD. Ten CDs. Okay. So this this her point. She's saying that a lot of people who fall prey to people that sell the seeds to them. This is a difference. There's a difference in the prices. And so she sells a tin, a tin of pepper for 10 Ghana cities because she knows that a lot of a lot of energy went into putting this together. But for those who add seeds and add other substances to make it plenty and to make it too red, it is, they sell it for a very cheaper price for like five Ghana cities. And so if you want to be able to you know, find out the, those who are selling it right and those who are selling it wrong, you know that the price difference can also really matter.
Now, I there be a day or because I a flanning in my back? Oh, there be me, there's any word in Sammy Jayo. Mijay, Sammy, I guess I'm a deep in Timijay. Well, she says it wouldn't come to a point where she would, you know, decide to go and buy flour, buy Gary and add it because if she's the money, the business not bringing her money, she would just quit. But I have heard over time that people, the people that sell um, oil, the popular zomi that we normally use, uh, also mix their food substance with other things, other elements that I, I cannot verify. But I see that Ma, Madame Esther here has also been selling here at the Malata market for um, a while. Now, in Pacho, how many years now? So, what on oil? Uh, maybe I'm starting and chair. Oh, starting and chair? Yes, I'm starting and chair. Like almost and said three years. Three years, I work a crowd. Now, business, no question. Oh, oh yeah. Mati. Mm. Say, is Omiya, ye dear Binsi, ye dear Gobe, ye dear Contum Restu, nay, eh, Ada Ediano. A almond dinner, my fra, a man near Coco, say ya. What sounds what to be that? Matida, Matipa, make us a minty, an amiboy. As I say, Mimme Tony, an amity, Minty Matty. Then I'll say, Omade Fra. Okay, ye made a mitten, say, say, Binimudi, Sudi, and a fra, yes, Sudi. Then I Sudi. Me to me, who are the crop? And then Tina Marty, and Tina will catch it all. So, you know, a money a day. I must say, money a cocoa. Money a cocoa. Hey, Marty. Okay, I'll, I'll come back to her. But she's saying that she's been in this business for three good years. And yes, she has heard that people add all sorts of things to this red oil that we all feel we think that it's safe for consumption. She mentioned a substance called Sudin. I, I have no idea what Sudin is, but she says it gives it a very reddish color. So you just like we have for the pepper, where we found people adding red seeds to add color to it. People also purchase this zomi and add all sorts of things to it, like Sudin, to make it red and you know so that you you do find it appetizing, uh, and then you eventually buy it and you consume. But also, also free will be whole. I the the brown. Now, how sure are you say? Nipa na or the oil ni brown. No one fresh and fry. Oh, I'm ready. I'm starting. I do run now. I'm a boy. I'm a meeting. My mama na or the brown. I'm fresh and fry. So the chef or the baby fry or buy me. Oh, or buy ni ni be ye different. She had the idea and tessa. It will make me a vouch. So oil now. What one say? Yeah, the food and drugs authority for basi siya. No mo con conduct a test. Ebe ebe okay. 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 But who say say fine say no say say what the fra say say Say, Nanya Missura will be the Bibe Fra. I say, I'm sure we'll more and Sasa will do with Fra. May all your honor say, the bar me didn't come, she be good for you could differ. And tea, me who said, Mean your show, say, my men will crowd the Bibe Fra. As I say, they will not your bone. So the Fran on your co yaria, I should eat the home. Well, she she has summed it all up beautifully. Um, she says that she feels that it's only people with bad intentions and evil minds that perpetuate such act by acting certain substances just so that you'll be able to make more profit. She feels that, um, she has heard that all these things that we add to our food um, gives us a lot, you know, gives a lot of sickness to people that consume it, like from heart to the kidney to the lungs to what all sorts of things. And the problem is that there are times that your, your, your medical practitioner tells you that you know, don't add all, don't eat this. You don't eat the substance. You agree that you will not eat it. But then you are buying something that contains what your doctor doesn't want you to take. And so this conversation is actually very extensive. Uh, because of the race, a lot of the people that sell, I wanted to find somebody who sold condo to find out whether, um, you know, she actually adds lime, lime together with the seeds and the shell, everything together. Uh, to, to, to sell, but unfortunately for us, we haven't been able to find anybody because of the weather condition that we came to meet. But the conversation still continues. Aisha, 
I hand over to you back in the studio. Thank you very much. Nancy MFA Jardosi was live from the Makala market. Let me get to Dr. Oreku uh, Asari, who is a food scientist and also has done a lot of research. Mm -hmm. um, the situation is worrying, I guess, especially uh, to people like you who've always uh, done this throughout the years. Yes, it is worrying. Um, it's been, uh, it's been, uh, how do I put it? We've all known that uh, this practice has been very common in our markets mm. and um, it's not really a new phenomenon. You know, it's, it's something that has been done over the years, but now it's, it's graduating into another level where um, it's having a lot more health implications. Mm. And so I think there's the need to really uh, pay a lot more attention to, to you know, the development. Let, let's get deep into what your research found and whether these facts support what you found in your research. Yes, so basically over the years, I do sample products from the markets and do all kinds of research. Um, you know, bring the samples to the lab and do some analysis on them. I've worked on uh, tomato powder, I've worked on fish powder, um, fruits and vegetables in, in, in our, on our local markets. I've even done some studies on um, the corn meals that we are using to, to process, you know, our products. And um, for that particular study, for instance, I found out that the mills that are being used, um, so the parts, you know, as you use the mills, there's wear and tear. So for those parts uh, that need to be changed, uh, the, the, the people who, are, who own these machines do not use genuine parts. So they use parts that are from scrap metals. Mm. And so as the milling goes on, you have a lot more of these metals leaching into the food. So what we did was we bought samples from, uh, collected samples from different mills in Accra and we did some analysis of the elemental composition and we found a lot of uh, heavy metals having been leached into some of these uh, products. Mm. So generally um, f the, the major concern now at these markets specifically is the issue that you, you are uh, uh, covering, mm -hmm. adulteration, food adulteration. Okay. So what is food adulteration? It's basically um, adding something that does not need to be in the food to the food. Okay. So you're adulterating it in some form. So you're telling a consumer that I'm selling you groundnut paste, but then I've added Tom Brown or coconut powder. Why would you do that? One, it could be greed you know you just want to increase you know make uh, it look a bit more so you get more profit from mm. from what you're getting and um, the issue of adulteration is serious because if you're adulterating anything without telling the consumer then you're being fraudulent mm. about it so that's and something we call food fraud okay basically and also not even considering the health implications exactly. but you've talked about uh, tomato powder you've talked about granite you've talked about uh, condo and all that let's look at specifically what mm. substances are they using in adulterating these uh, food items okay so for tomato for instance tomato powder um, I, I see that you covered a story where um, you, you saw the anato seeds that they're using. So mm. the first time I came across tomato powder, which is not, it's a fake product, mm. um, I also went behind the scenes and bought samples and took them to the lab. And I tried to analyze to see the composition. And uh, it took a while for me to even get the, the results because it was, because I did not know what was in there, I couldn't really characterize it. Then I went behind the scenes and I was able to get hold of the seeds. And then I, I did a bit of research and found out it was anato seeds. Mm. Uh, I've seen uh, a, a lot of discussion on Facebook this morning about anato seeds. Yes, anato seeds are natural uh, seeds. Uh, in, in the West, they use it uh, as a food colorant. So they extract the color and use it for food. It is uh, uh, safe to consume. Okay. But the thing is, you are adding something that is not supposed to be in there to a food product okay. and you are not disclosing that to the to consumer, the consumer. Um, so if somebody is for instance allergic to anato seeds you're causing harm yeah and it's not just the anato seeds they add color they add corn chaff and other things to the uh, to the tomato powder mm. uh, and also to fresh tomato in what for those who are cooking jollof fries and the wachi stews and all of that mm. so um, to the fresh tomatoes, what do they add? So f when they go to blend, like you saw in, in uh, you know, when you went on that visit, oh. is they add the anato seeds to the fresh tomato, okay. blend, and then come and cook 
whatever they need to cook, you mm. know, with, with, with that. Yeah. So they are adding colorants, they are adding um, other f uh, food products that I would say um, are not supposed to be in there. And also they are adding, um, uh, sometimes they even add, uh, uh, you know, for instance, the A1 situation where they want something that would give it a bit more taste. But it's not everybody who is, um, can consume such products, you know. Uh, for, uh, for fruits and vegetables and even products that are being displayed on the market, so there's a bit of uh, contamination, mm. meaning they are doing certain things to the food that does not to be does not need to be done to the food. Okay. So, for instance, you're displaying fish, and in order to drive away flies, you decide to sprinkle a chemical, mm. you know, which is not food grade, onto the fish so okay. that it does not attract flies. Mm. You are actually contaminating the food, yes. and you, it's going to be toxic, you know, when or somebody consumes it. So it's not just adding, but also the way they are. Uh, displaying the product, what they do to the product, what they do to preserve the product, what they do to um, enhance certain aspects of the food like color and taste. Mm. All these things are, are, are not... We, we need to look at the substances that are used in uh, adulterating these food mm. items and you talked about the anatosine. Mm. Now it's, it's actually safety to consume but the thing is you need to tell your consumer what you're mixing up in whatever you're selling to your consumer. But here we are, we've heard about the um, tilapia, the dry tilapia, mm -hmm. which they use for maling mm -hmm. and, and the red oil and all mm -hmm. of that. Now we are hearing about smoked fish, uh, which um, traders use chemicals to drive away flies. Mm -hmm. What kind of chemicals are we talking about and how dangerous is this? So, um, you know, people, uh, I would say sometimes they're very ignorant. And so, for instance, you see kerosene and you think, well, you know when you go to some restaurants, they use kerosene to, to clean, clean the, the tables plate. and all of that. Mm -hmm. So people are using all kinds of chemicals. I don't even want to zoom in. Mm -hmm. But these market women you these see do. are very, very um, creative. Yeah. You know, so they discover that something can do something and then they use it. For instance, some even put, I've seen a, a watch seller put coil in the cubicle where she's, she's selling, selling the food I've and you ask before. yourself when the coil when the heat where does the heat of the coil go, go to it, it it goes back into the food yeah so their understanding is anything that can drive away flies anything that can you know drive away insects i'll use i wouldn't be surprised that they're even using all kinds of um uh, uh, things that will kill rodents and all of that in, you know, just around which the area. Which could also exactly, be harmful. Which could also be harmful. To a human. But then with the formalin, they figured out that, you know, formalin is used to preserve, you know, dead the bodies. dead body. So they figured out that if they use the formalin, it will make the, f the, the, the fish look a bit um, wholesome and in, um, <laughs> <laughs> not wholesome, but intact mm. or look a bit supposed to yeah. look fresh yeah so they're using all kinds of chemicals mm. they're using all uh, and they, they get creative <laughs> as, as, as the, by the day, by the day <laughs> more or less yes interesting times and on the streets we've been speaking to Ghanaians about food safety here's what they have to say if you come to Nima in fact as you are saying that's something that is on my heart I even after school I want to you know going out and providing education to people about sanitation. It's very, very serious over there. So you care? Yeah, I care. I do care a lot. Why? But so far as I have no option. So far as I'm, I'm hungry and I need something to, you know, uh, uh, put inside my stomach and I just go for it like that and go away. That's all. But I care about it. But I know that it's very, very crucial for my health. Yeah. Food is all about hygiene, and since I'm not there and they've prepared it, I can't trust the food because I myself, when I'm in the house cooking, I don't trust myself sometimes because I go out to buy the food outside. I don't know what the food contains. So when I come home, I would have to go examine the food before I use it. So I don't need to trust or I don't trust the food I buy outside always. Yeah. No, if I'm hungry, I'll just want to find out a place to get the food to eat. So I don't care whether how the money to prepare the food, but just to get it and fill my stomach and go. Yeah, I do. I care about, what about my food. Why do you care? I care in terms of the, how the place is, in terms of the person 
selling the food, how well he or she is dressed and the surroundings where the person is selling the food. But that will make you hungry, so why must you care about it? No, sometimes you have to put the, the hunger aside and check what's around, because that is what, that's the person's brand. You have to check the brand and then put the hunger aside sometime. No, me, I know they care. Why? Because uh, if you the hunger, like if you get any food, uh, uh, especially the cheap food, no, yeah, one corner, then you go buy and chop. You know, they, like, I know, I know, go bother myself, go buy pizza and then things like under Ghana and then things. You get your gar gar beans be uh, one side, afternoon, they square, chop some crab, but uh, yeah, no, yeah. So, you don't care about the health implications, whether you get sick or not? Oh, sometimes the environment too, they count. You see, you go some place, uh, you go see, you see, say, the person child cry, he spoiled there, but you know if you eat for that place. So uh, that one, I go advise you, you go take um, like take away, you know, go chop for the buy. Before check the environment too, the hygiene be serious, pa. So you had um, people from the streets of Accra talking about how uh, the situation, how they're taking the situation. But interesting, how have you? Um, what have you been doing with your findings? Have you um, drawn the attention of the FDA, for instance, the Ghana Standards Authority, for instance? And what has been the response? Well, we try as research scientists to do the work that we ought to do, the research work, and disseminate the information. The first point, of course, sometimes through journals, and of course, being on platforms like this to talk about the research. But um, we do have some collaboration with some of the agencies like FDA and Standards Board because we are all within the scientific community. But um, like I said, a lot of this information is out there. But the most important thing is what is done once the results are out there. If we do not see this as uh, uh, something that ought to be addressed, then we we'll always come back and forth. You do the research, the result is out there, but then you know there's like there's no continuation. Yeah. You know so. Um, we, um, I'm just advocating for a, a, a bit more from the authorities like mm -hmm. FDA, the local assemblies. We should be able to enforce some laws that would ensure that some of these things do not happen on the market. We know where to find them. You know, we know where to find some of these products. For instance, if when, when the uh, issue about the adulteration of the palm oil came in, what, what did FDA do when they verified that indeed that was the case? They banned, if you remember, they banned the sale of, of palm oil. Mm. And I remember a lot of market women, there was a wake up call for them. So they were like, okay, we are going to be careful and not, you know, and adulterate right and do the right thing. So from time to time, once we discover these things through research like mine and others, you know, we need to put in a certain... Um, uh, we need to put in some measures, mm. you know, to control the situation. Either we can confiscate products, we can we can um, seize products on these markets, we can prosecute. Mm. Because sometimes if there's something fraudulent about it, it is a criminal issue. Mm. And um, also we can um, actually put the local, um, uh, the local assemblies, the health officers, and, mm. you know, we have all these people yeah. supposed to be police. one of the know. local assemblies that uh, detected exactly. this. Exactly. So, so that's a good what, one. What does the bylaws, what do the bylaws say mm. that you can do in such a situation? We need to be serious about enforcement. Yeah. I think that is one of the ways that we can really address some of these issues positively. Um, um, so... We know that food is food. Yeah. Whether you like it or not, people will get hungry and they will go and buy food. But interestingly, you hear my colleagues speaking with the market women and all of them are denying. Mm -hmm. So you ask yourself, should we even be having this conversation? Because the market women say they are not doing what we think they're doing. What do we do as consumers? Because we need food to survive. I mean, definitely the consumer has to be more aware of some of these issues and you have to be very critical when you're buying food. For instance, you go and stand by a pile of fish and there's not one fly hovering around. It should tell you that, well, there could be something, you know, that has been sprayed on the fish. I, I get it. That so the we should consumer, buy the one that has flies on? Well, you, like I was telling <laughs> you, I, 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 let me share the story. So I found a batch of beans that I had bought 
to have some kind of a petroleum taste. And I called a friend up and said, who's also a scientist, and I said, my, my bean seems to have been contaminated with some chemical. And he advised that next time when I go to the market, I should buy beans with insects. Because then you know that there's not much chemical residue in there, you mm. know. So it sounds <laughs> practical, but really, I feel that the consumer needs to be careful. But then the authorities that ensure that these things are curtailed also need to work. Mm. Because we are also here to protects the consumer and the consumer cannot do it all mm. so in as much as I would advise that you have to be careful about what you're buying yes if you buy powdered pepper if you know the powdered pepper has color and we all decide not to be buying pepper with color I think they would have to you know sit up and they will do the right thing mm. so yes we, 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 we know that consumers yes we have to you know play the part and be extra vigilant but I also think the authorities who are, are supposed to help consumers should also um, do their bit. Interestingly, um, the FDA is yet to join this conversation, but uh, they have already cautioned the public mm. to be aware of what they buy and what they consume. And of course, um, it takes people like you to determine that there is this thing mixed up here and mm. over. It's, it's not just anybody who can determine and see that this oil, red oil has this mixed mm. with it right. and all of that. What kind of education have you... I know the FDA has a surveillance department. Mm. Have you had any engagement with that department or the FDA in general to educate people on some of these things? Well, I haven't. I, I did engage a colleague at FDA. I wanted to find out a bit more about what the surveillance unit does. And of course, education is one. But I also believe that if there are no measures put in place for them to be able to um, fish out some of these products and confiscate them as well as prosecute, then maybe it's about time we gave them those powers. because. Mm -hmm education for me is not enough mm. and for me i am a scientist it does not i i don't have that authority to go you know confiscating things and arresting things i do my research and i try to put the information out there mm. and 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 that's what most of my colleagues do but i believe that there should be a stronger collaboration between uh, food scientists or scientists who are doing similar works mm. and the food and drugs board as well as the ghana standards board mm. because that would be a better team work you know okay. in order to achieve the the desired results let me get on to facebook because uh, there are a number of comments that you are pouring in there and see uh, about this whole thing because it concerns you and i we all eat to survive so we put it there the joy clean ghana team discovers use of foreign substances to um pepper granite paste condo etc how concerned are you about the safety of the food in our market? And um, hashtag the polls. And a number of comments are coming in. Let's start with Rich Efrifa. He says, great job, Joy FM, for the marvelous work. Please continue to do this. And I would like to appeal to the Ministry of Sanitation and Tourism to support this project. Around Achimota New Plan, people living across from the Achimota Melcom have been dumping their refuse right in front of the bus shelter on the main road because waste bins have been placed there and it has heaped to a <laughs> to a mountain. Can you bring the officers to visit signs behind the new plant assembling plant at Achimota? Lastly, we want those vendors who have erected unauthorized structures removed. Please. Raphael Goka says, we need to educate our mothers and sisters selling at marketplaces. They moved us, uh, they moved from us every day to sell. They also prepared our food at home. Oh. Home food is neat, but to the public no Rafael Guka sends that one yeah B. Godwin says the love for money is gradually outweighing the love for mankind God save us and King Kaka says tell us the name of the foreign material that are added God save us now I'm asking where are the planting for food and show the NPP boasts of and uh, those are some of your comments. Cynthia KMFA says our food is covered by the blood of Jesus Christ says <laughs> God that I save Okay, so she doesn't really care about all of that. She knows that once she say, so help me God, mm -hmm. the food is sanctified. And I'm kill, say you guys are doing a great job. Thank you. And Noah Kutia says, this is sad. Not too sure about 3% of Ghanaian population uh, who are above 60 years of age, yet the death rate is high. 
when you go to the hospitals, the majority of the sicknesses um, are as a result of food poisoning, mixing toxic substances to food to improve flavor or make it beautiful, forgetting that it poses much threat to human health. I don't understand why in Ghana every food joint is close to gut it. <laughs> Good initiative, Jory News. Ban and or regulate this food vendors to save lives. And Mohammed Shamsuddin Sika says, is it compulsory for granite or pepper to look red? Why are you worrying yourselves to make things dangerous for our health? And Nana Kwame Tebi says, our market women need thorough education. And those are some comments on Facebook. A lot more there. Wisdom says we should try uh, and keep our environments clean and keep things like this away from the house flies and adam isifu says people should see for themselves and appreciate the work environmental health officers do and adnan al hassan jambedu says the general Ghanaian population business people to be precise are getting corrupt every day granite paste is mixed with soybeans and honey is also mixed with either tamarind or sugar in the name of making profits it's getting out of hand our lives on daily basis are put on harm's way by our own countrymen and women and majid says they should please check the indomie sellers too I guess that's true. Osman Amel Jr. says one ball of carbohydrate and three beautiful set of proteins. Okay. And <laughs> <laughs> so Kwasetra says only God help us. So Eric Kofi says appreciated. And Allah Odan says instead of joy to, to capture and paste, kindly use the energy in your platform to educate. Flies are all over the world. Oh, okay, Ola. <laughs> but uh, this is the education we're doing because if we don't share this information, how would the public know and be careful? And don't forget, we're also advising the public on how to go about their meals. And Sanji McLean says, that's the reason why I don't buy any already cooked food from a market. You are lucky. There are people who don't even get the time to prepare food for mm -hmm. themselves. So they would have to rely on food prepared from outside. And Grace Millicent says, hmm, some even use colors on the beef spouted pepper. It's so bad. Nano Deampofa says, oh my goodness. And Albert Hagen says, hey, what a world we live in. Darling boy Pascal Kwame Chelsea comes in to say, hey, Asemo, God, what? <laughs> very, very bad. <laughs> very interesting. And of course, as we're talking about, one of them, um, indicated that we should share some of the chemicals that people mix mm -hmm. in these uh, food items for us and i think you should re you said that uh, already but i think we should repeat it so that the consuming public will understand and also what to look out for i mean what are the signs you see if you're buying you're buying uh, powdered pepper for instance what are the signs that tells you that no this could be mixed with uh, some substances Okay, so for the case of pepper, I mean, when you dry pepper, you do not get a bright red color. It dims a bit, sometimes yeah. like brick red. So mm -hmm. if you're going to buy powdered pepper and it's bright red, it should tell you that there is a bit of uh, color in there. Um, so for some, it's very obvious to spot. Um, groundnut paste, for instance, I, I find out when I am, you know, mixing the groundnut paste in water mm. and you realize that it's so whitish. You know, when you're just about to make groundnut soup and you put, you mix it in water, you know, you realize that it's very white. Mm. You can tell that some kind of flour or, you know, powdered substance has been put in there. Mm. And it shouldn't be so stiff. The paste shouldn't be very stiff. Uh, for me also, once one person mentioned price. Because, and that was a lady in, in the clip. Yeah. Because if you want pure powdered pepper, when you dry pepper, of course, it shrinks in, 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 in volume. Yeah. So to get... Uh, a, 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 volume, a volume of pepper uh, s uh, being priced at a very low amount, I mean, being uh, very cheap, it should tell you that. Um, I mean, to get a, 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 a large number, if I should put it, mm. being so cheap, it should tell you that it's not just pepper in there. Because the pure pepper that has been dried, which is premium, would, would sell for a little bit uh, more, mm. if, if I should put that. Okay. And um, some foods are not difficult to spot 
in terms of adulteration, but some are. A typical example is when I sampled uh, fish powder and shrimp powder from different markets and sent to the lab. Mm. And in my experiment, I found out that one indicator, which is ash content, okay. was very high for some of the samples. So ash should not be so high. You usually record ash in very small percentage. And it was so high. And I thought my method was not um, accurate. I was wondering, but it, wasn't, it didn't cut across all the samples. So I sent one of my <laughs> technicians to go behind the scenes. And we had to go and interview a few people. And we realized that we're adding um, sawdust to the fish powder. You can't spot that there's sawdust in there. But if you consume a product like this, you know sawdust has cellulose, which cannot digest mm. upon consumption. So these can even pierce the um, small intestine and cause a lot of harm. Yeah. So you may not be able to tell that such a product has been adulterated, mm -hmm. but some are quite easy to, to spot. So if you're going to buy something like palm oil, please go with the oil that does not look too red. Mm. I mean, if you're buying condo, at least smell the condo, if possible, taste it because now we know they're adding lime. Mm. If you can taste that it's too acidic or it has an off smell, yeah. then you know that something has been added to it. But basically, I think we should not compromise quality of food because of price. Mm. Try and, and buy products that are of good quality. And I'll just, I'm not advertising, but I'll state this. For instance, Food Research has a line of products and the, these are very um, co uh, processed in hygienic conditions. They have fufu flour, they have granite paste, which I use, and that granite paste is not adulterated. Mm. You know, the issue also about aflatoxin is also, you know, yeah. very, very serious. So mm. buy from sources that you can vouch for. There are a lot more food entrepreneurs now coming up who are making uh, processing foods. Identify food processors you know are doing the right thing, whose products have gone through certification uh, from Standards Board, Food and Drugs Authority, and make informed choices. We are not sure about the uh, content of a food product. You can send samples to um, uh, Binari. That is uh, one of the institutions at Ghana Atomic Energy Commission. You can send some samples to Food and Drugs Authority or Ghana Standards Board, uh, Food Science Department in the University of Ghana. And we can do some... To cross-check. Yes, exactly. Um, yes, Maria exactly. Lovelace, Abba Johnson, is Chief Regulatory Officer of the Food Management Department at the, at the FDA. She joins me on the phone. Good afternoon to you, uh, Madam. Many thanks for your time on the polls. Good afternoon. We're hearing this afternoon of foreign substances uh, being mixed with the food products sold on the market. Uh, for instance, we're hearing of a lime mixed with condo, the one we used to prepare our favorite banco. We're hearing of uh, sawdust being mixed with a powdered fish and all of that. Has this come to your notice? Oh, thank you very much. Um, with the condo being added uh, with lime, being added to condo, this is really new to us. Mm. But there are some types of adulteration that have been happening that we know, and we have taken steps to curb the situation. We have educated consumers on it for them to be able to check for the good ones. Let's say something like powder pepper. Mm. The powder pepper, we know they add gari, they grind the gari into very fine powder and then add it to the powder pepper and then add it to some um, small, small seeds Not to see. from mm. the tree and that gives us the color because when they add the gari, it becomes white, it doesn't become very red mm. and for them to restore the color, they add the pizza seeds. This is something that we know, and we have educated people on what to look out for. Like when you buy the powder pepper, just put it in a glass of water or a cup of water. Just mix them um, with water. Add it with water. Add water to it, actually, and then stir it. Just wait for a minute or two. If you see a separation, you know that this is adulterated because all the guy you will then settle down there and then the pepper itself will float up. So you know this is not good as adultery. And we have also been to the market. We did, we've made some arrests over the years and educated the market women and all that. So they do not do that. So if you ask, has it come to our notice? Yes, some of us has come to our notice. 
we are taking steps to get the situation. Yes. You, uh, you have you have a you have a surveillance department, um, yes. don't you? W yes. What's the mandate of this department at the FDA? Is to ensure that we protect public health, and so we go out there to see if every food there is safe for human consumption is of good quality and also uh, and really to find out if food is of good quality we take them to a space we take them to the laboratory one other way of testing of knowing is also to look out for registered products fda registered products so all the products in ghana that are pre-packaged have the fda registration number so if there is no product if there is a product without the fda registration number then you take it or you buy it or consume it at your own risk. So we tell people you need to get it registered or you need to buy only registered for that. So when we get, go out there and we find unregistered for that, we take them off the shelf. We also look out for um, expired products or improperly labeled products. So that's another mandate of the surveillance department. So how regular, um, Madam Johnson, do you um, conduct monitoring of uh, these the activities day. of the market every women? Every day of and, the and, week. And, and this hasn't day. come to your Sometimes notice? Sometimes we go out of our way to do it on weekends. But all the five, from Monday to Friday, we are out there in buses, bus loads of people, NAPCO people, uh, national service personnel, our staff, we are out of there looking out for all these things. Well, um, Dr. Riku Asari here is actually not happy about how the FDA has handled uh, some of these situations. What has been your concern? Well, my has concern... Handled, the FDA has handled... Well, some of the concerns, I mean, for instance, um, you're saying this hasn't come to your notice. She's a food scientist. She conducts a lot of research around this area. That's she a, she has a... Condo with a line. Yeah, for instance, she said that okay. hasn't come to your notice, but yeah, she has a concern. Right that, she, okay, yeah. so what, what, what has been well, your concern? Well, my concern is that I believe that they do have a, a serious money. Please, can it be a bit louder? Yeah, okay. they, have a, they have a mandate to protect consumers, and I'm very happy that she's saying that the surveillance unit is supposed to ensure that whatever, you know, it's being sold out there, uh, it's safe for consumers, mm. but I want but to know. But that's not the situation out there. Pay your research. Yes, I mean for the registered products. When it comes to the products, in, uh, you know, on the shelves, I think they're doing a very good job with that. You know, they're ensuring that people are registering their product. I'm not too sure if they are really taking products that are not registered off the shelf, like she stated. But they do, um, you know, advocate for people to register their product, which is the proper thing to do. To do. But when it comes, my concern because I focus a lot on my research on food on the local market mm. is that there is more or less like no um, no uh, supervision or monitoring you know because these things have gone on for years you know the like she's saying there are a lot of NAPCO people on buses and on the markets educating but I wonder is education enough I believe that they, they should liaise with the, the, the local assemblies because they do have um, environmental officers and all of that in the local assemblies to, you know, arrest. There should be some form of punishment for people who are doing the wrong thing. There should be, yes, they can buy samples from the market every now and then and test to confirm what is going on on the markets. But there should be some enforcement of the law, you know, to, to let people be accountable for what they're doing wrong. Mm. There should be prosecution because, like I said, if you're telling a consumer, I'm selling you granite paste, and it's granite paste plus X, it's fraud. It's food fraud. Mm. And so you should, there should be some consequences to, the, to those actions. So. Okay. I just want to engage more with the surveillance unit. Mm. And if, if maybe it's a matter of um, uh, uh, expanding their mandates to be able to really, um, you know, initiate some of these, you know, things that really would bring uh, results, I, I, I guess that would be the right way. Yeah. But I think there's a lot more to do, honestly, you know. I want to believe that um, 
Maria Lovelace Johnson is still on the line. Okay, we lost her. We're trying to get her and get some response from the uh, her department and what they're doing about this concern rates. But when we get her also, I'll be finding out from her how they collaborate with scientists or food safety scientists like uh, Dr. Riku Asari here and uh, you know to get to know some of the things on the ground and to be able to be proactive. All right, so I'm told lovely uh, John Singh is back on the line. We lost you briefly. Yes. So she, she was raising the point and concerns about unregistered products on the market. For the registered mm -hmm. ones that you found you find on the counter, she thinks you're doing uh, some good job there. But the problem has been the unregistered products on the market. And you specifically talked about, for instance, powdered pepper sold on the market, which is mixed yeah. with other products. For condo, for instance, we don't know of any registered product where you can have condo registered. So if there's a problem, you can contact a, a or B company. How have you dealt with this one? Because I, I suspect it's a very big problem. Okay. We have, uh, we really monitor the non free package products as well. We go to the market places, we pick up samples of such things as well. But how come we even go to know about the pepper, we go to know about the tomato powder, if you remember, um, about two years ago, we educated the public on tomato powder. We are made arrest. We arrested the people who are even doing it. The groundnut cake with cocoa stick that is added and all that. It's only because we took samples from these uh, from the market. That's when we detect that these things are happening. We actually brought uh, we brought the people to book that those who are doing it. We went on, you see, we do a lot of the education and the enforcement as well. The, the reason why we do a lot of the consumer education is that for these people that are producing and non prepackaged food or just producing in their backyards and in their homes and just putting them out there on the market, the start of their job makes it very difficult, very, very difficult in regulating them. So we teach the consumers to help us well. And some of these things we do are consumer driven most of the time. They think of, the, of what the consumer wants and they do it. They think that if the consumer, if they do the uh, community product, like let's say the grandma, if it is milk and like into a smaller quantity, let's say if one margin of grandma, let's say, cost five cities and they mill it, and they get the quantity to be a quarter of the margin set, and they sell that one to percentage, then the consumer is not buying. So they say they need to be seen the consumer. But that is against our public health act. And we tell them, this is against the law, this is criminal. So we bring them to book, and we educate the consumers to, to look out for these things. The itinerant data of, the, of the, their job system makes it very difficult in regulating them. They, Today they sell in front of your house. Tomorrow they might be selling in front of my house. I mean, they, and they even carry the things and they hawk the things most of the time. And because they are not very stationary, it's not just about it. We do the enforcement, but we do a lot of consumer education too, for the consumers to look out for the things they are doing. So really, we are doing a lot out there, and we are correcting them. Most of them do some of these things out of ignorance. They don't even know that what they are doing is bad. They think yes, and they eat um, powdered cassava, and what called cocoa tea, and they eat Ghana. So if they make what they big deal. It is a big deal because if somebody is diabetic and the person is not supposed to take, take it back, and you add that, or let's say that uh, powdered pepper, you add garlic to it. The person is diabetic and does not have to eat some some size or whatever. And then you add that to the person thinks, well, maybe I'm a lover of food. I could have taken to go and like it. But because of my situation and wanting to re take very good care of myself, I'm just going in for life. Only to realize that in there is a life is diarrhea as well. So then if he knew that he may as well have taken it to go and then and be okay. So it's, it's criminal. 
It's, it's criminal. Mara, what do you think you about, um, and, and how do you respond to people who think that the FDA has over the years become um, a statement issuing authority? Um, they explain that you wait for situations like this to happen, then you issue statements to caution the public. I mean, we don't see much of um, education coming from the FDA on food safety, for instance. We do a lot of public education. We do a lot of public education. Maybe in the media, well, well, the media most of the time, instead of you giving us a lot of time doing the education, you would rather want to do the politics bit because you think that's what will let your station sell. So maybe you don't give us such much time. But every little opportunity you give us, we use it. Every little opportunity you give us, we use it. Mm. So we do a lot of that. And we go to the market places, we mount buses and educate travelers. We go to a lot of any forum. But, but over the years, how have you collaborated with uh, researchers, for instance, food safety scientists like um, Dr. Ray Kwasari here and others who often conduct researches in this field to be able to get, um, you know, ideas of what is happening on the market because every day the market women um, the market people are devising new ways of getting more profit if they conduct their research and they give us we will ask for it immediately mm. we collaborate mainly with uh, local authorities because they are everywhere you can find them in every nook and cranny and they are there with them i mean they are there they tell us what's happening we work through them, that's the district assembly, the municipal metropolitan and district assembly. With the research institutions, with the uh, um, universities and all that, we have all, we really have open doors. Anyone who has anything and brings it in, we are fine. We are very fine. We have the research institutes on our board as a food and drug authority board. We have the uh, universities and all that. We have committees, technical advisory committees and all that, where they all are. So really, we have open doors. When they bring it, we will act immediately on it. So she says they are willing, their doors are open for um, collaboration from people like you. So once you get your findings, you can share with the FDA. Mm -hmm. You're willing to do so? Oh, of course. <laughs> I'm grateful for your time. Um, Maria Lovelace, Abba Johnson's Chief Regulatory Officer at the FDA. And in the studio here with me is um, Dr. Mivizo Rikwa Sari. is a food scientist uh, who's done a lot of research in uh, food safety. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you for having me.